So I got all the lead acid batteries out. Got them stowed here in the garage. I'll probably find a nice project for that. Charging the car on solar. Got that cranking. Let's take a look inside and see what we got. Yep, so there's the system now. Got all this space here. I moved this rack over and I've got the new rack in place. Check it out. Looking good in there. All right, so what have I got? I've been running this stack of EG4 batteries for about two and a half years. So this system has worked just flawless. I mean, it is bulletproof. This system is great. All right, but I thought, well, I want to double from 30 up to 60 kilowatt hours. So probably the smart thing to do would be to add another bank of EG4s, right? I mean, same battery. I know it works. It's great. Problem is, this bank is $9,000, where the Ecoworthy is $5,000, right? Almost half price. And I just saw a video by uh, Will Pros where uh, he tore this whole thing down. And Will Pros, by the way, is he, the guy is a national treasure. <laughs> I really like Will. If you haven't seen this channel I'll put a link in the description but he tore this battery bank down and he found that you know they use mostly the same components as the EG4 grade A cells excellent construction all the same temperature sensors I mean it's almost the same battery but half price now the EG4s are UL listed and the eco worthy may be UL listed by now I know they're probably close to getting that but uh, that's something you might want to check. Anyways, um, so I know the EG4s work great. I don't know about the Ecoworthy yet. So what I'm going to do, instead of combining them right away, I'm going to shut my system down for like the fourth time in nine years. I'm going to take off these leads here and I'm going to move them over to the Ecoworthy and I'm going to run this Ecoworthy bank all by itself for at least a month. So I want to prove that at least it has to work perfect on its own before we try and, you know, put them together and see how they play together. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. I'm going to rewire it and then we'll be back. All right, guys, we're all shut down. Got the bat. This, this is completely off now and I went ahead and moved the leads over here. It's not pretty, but this is temporary. Those two bottom leads will come off and they'll go back over at the top of this bank. One other thing, this has a nice bus bar in it, whereas the uh, Ecoworthy is, um, you know, jumped all the way down, which isn't as good. So that's why I wired, um, you know, one of the positive leads at the top and one at the bottom. I think that's the best way to do it. Hopefully I'm not missing anything here. So the next step is to go ahead and try and crank this thing up. This never boots up easy. So the way I do it is I open up both inverters so that way we can use the, you know, like the charge resistor to limit the current when you first turn it on. And, and it usually takes two or three batteries to start those two heavy copper wound inverters. They don't like to start up too easy. So let's go ahead and pop three of these on. We're going to go one, two, three quickly. We'll do two at the same time and then the third come on baby all right so far so good let's crank on all the charge controllers so far so good everybody's happy hey they're working the first try it makes me nervous. It never works on the first try. The, this is the input from the solar, which I'm going to leave off for now. Let's come back over here. Everybody looks happy. I'm going to go ahead and turn the other three on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's see how it likes that. All right, so far so good. I like it. All right, let me uh, 
check on a few things and we'll be back. All right, so, so far everything kind of checks out pretty good. I went through and checked all the cell voltages and everybody looks happy. It's not pulling any current yet, hardly, because basically nothing's really on. So let's turn the inverters on. Let's see here. Oh, I hate that sound. <laughs> what does that do to our current? Not much. Huh. Okay. Let's put some output. All right. Fires that up. Let's switch on. Let's see. We'll do. Put this transfer switch on. And put some stuff on here. All right. Not much. Not much going on there. Well, eight amps. That's about 400 watts ish. Okay. 4.2. Let's see how well we're splitting that current. Not that great. 2.8. Oh, that's because. Yeah, that's just because of the way this system works. So. Uh. Yeah, I'll be only one inverters on, and uh, I'm not even gonna explain that. <laughs> I'll be back. So I turned on both inverters, and that will cause it to pull evenly. So now we've got yeah, about 14, 13, 14 amps, and 14.3, 14.4. Yeah, so that's working pretty good, pulling evenly. Uh, the next thing to do would be to turn on the solar input. Uh, problem is right now, there's probably about 10,000 watts coming in here, so I gotta wait till we go behind a cloud, and then I'll turn it on. Okay, so I turned on the solar when it was under a cloud, and now we've got some sun coming in. So, let's check. Yeah, there's 7,000 watts. We got 86 amps. And we see about 80 amps going into the battery. Oh, dropping down a little bit now, but they are charging. That's good. Now we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, basically these batteries don't really know their state of charge. We're going to have to cycle it probably for a week maybe. All the way up and down. And then they'll really hopefully all level out at the same and figure out where they're at. This system also does not know the state of charge of the battery bank. It takes about a day or two for it to figure it out. So, uh, anyways, hopefully that all works out and then we'll come back maybe in a month and tell you how the Echo Worthy bank does. Is it as good as the EG4? We'll find out. And if it is, we're gonna hook them together. See how they play together. But that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.